You are welcome to this brief introduction to the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 14, through chapter 5, verse 14. Here you will find two verses that are highly appreciated by Christians in every country. For example, verse 16, Let us, then, with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And in verses 8 and 9, Although he was a son, Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This text was originally written in Koine Greek, from which our modern Bible translations are made. The Greek text has been well preserved across 19 centuries. Still, a few modifications have been found in some manuscripts. For examples, in chapter 5, verse 1, a few ancient manuscripts omit the word both before gifts and sacrifices. In verse 3, several other manuscripts read his sins instead of his own sins. And in verse 12, several ancient manuscripts omit the word and before not solid food. To see other textual variants, visit the site hebrews.cura.download. As with all scripture, this passage has an historical background. A few points of history. From the 14th century BCE, the ancient Israelites had a central sacrificial system of priests required by the law of God. Psalm 110 verse 4 was written in the 10th century BCE by King David who uttered this psalm about a far future king who would rule over all the nations, revealing this word from God, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. David's son, King Solomon, constructed a central temple at Jerusalem where priests had to belong to the order of Aaron. More about that later. Ever since the Romans destroyed that temple in the year 70 CE, the Aaronic priesthood has ceased to function, hence the importance of the order of Melchizedek. This passage is replete with a number of important and fascinating Greek terms. For example, high priest, which by figurative extension is used of Christ, who serves as high priest by atoning for the sins of human beings. There are two different Greek terms, sometimes both translated by sympathize, and the importance of holding our confidence, that is, our boldness, courage, and fearlessness, especially in the presence of persons of high rank, in this case, in relation to God. The meaning of the term to beget, or to become the parent of, in verse 5.5, 5, by exercising the role of a parental figure to cause something to happen, to bring forth, produce, cause. And in verse 7, God was able to save Jesus from death. The preposition from, the little term ek, is a Greek marker denoting separation from, out of, or away from, especially of situations and circumstances out of which someone is brought. To read more about these and other vocabulary terms, visit the site Hebrews dot cura dot download. Two brief points about the grammar of this text. In verse 7, does the phrase save him from death mean a keep Jesus from dying, or does it mean to rescue Jesus after he died? Well, the word ek, when used with action verbs such as to rescue or to deliver, normally means out of. And from the point of pure logic, since God did answer Jesus' prayer, and since Jesus did die, the normal meaning of the words 
asserts that God was able to bring him back out of death, that is, to raise him back to life. In verse 12, some older translations read, You need one to teach you that which be the first principles, whilst others read, You need someone to teach you the first principles. The decision on how to translate depends on where we put the accent of the Greek word tina or tina. Since the oldest manuscripts did not have accent marks, translators must decide which makes better sense. Tina, that which, or tina, someone. More important to the interpretation of scripture is a text discourse, argument, or logic. Following Dr. Westfall's discourse analysis, we are looking at the book of Hebrews, divided into three great sections. The first is summarized in the phrase, Consider Jesus as the Apostle of our Confession. In today's passage, we enter section two, Consider Jesus as the High Priest of our Confession. And the first point in this section reads, Let us press on to maturity with new teaching about Jesus' priesthood. And in particular, subpoint one, draw near to the throne of grace. As you read through the text, try to discern the argument, that is, the logic that the author follows. So far, we have encountered four great exhortations, each introduced by the logical inference, therefore, from the first chapter material on who is the Son of God. Two one reads, therefore, pay much closer attention to what we have heard. In 3.1, therefore consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. And last time we saw 4.1, therefore let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed. And today we come to chapter 4 verse 14 reading, therefore let us hold fast to our confession since we have a high priest in heaven. The following verses provide with us a reason for holding fast, an explanation of the reason, and a practical application. The reason begins with the classical English term for, that is, for Jesus is able to sympathize. And this it has its own application, introduced by therefore, let us draw near, with a purposed phrase, that we may receive help. The explanation consists of, of two clauses. The first, for priests offer sacrifices, and God himself appoints priests. The application being this, again a logical deduction, thusly God appointed the Messiah, Christ, as a priest like Melchizedek. The proof of this lies in four statements. One from Psalm 2-7, God begot the Son, this is enthronement language. In Psalm 110, verse 4, God named the Son a priest. And then from general gospel knowledge, God has raised the Son from death. Along with this biblical promise, the Son saves forever those who obey him. However, there is a problem. The problem is this. Melchizedek is hard to explain. The cause of this problem is that you have become dull. Let me explain. For you need teachers. Secondly, for you need training. Training in the Word of God and training in discernment of right from wrong, of truth from error. Download this outline from Hebrews.cura.download. If you teach or preach this passage to others, you may choose to underscore four basic Christian doctrines illustrated in this book. In chapters 4 and 5, the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Secondly, in verses 5 and 6, the inspiration of Scripture. Verse 9, the offer of eternal salvation. And lastly, the importance of obedient faith. So let's look at some assignments. Here's our homework for this week. 
Please read through Hebrews 4.14 through 5.14 once a day this week in different translations. You can find seven English translations at netbible.org. As you do so, jot down notes and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study group. I would like to invite you also to prepare a theme paper. That is, choose a recurring theme from the book of Hebrews. Find all the instances of that theme in Hebrews by reading through the book, listing and summarizing the verses, at least the main ones, and then write up a one-page report or chart that you will present to your Bible study group. For example, this chart from a book I highly recommend by Bateman titled Charts on the Book of Hebrews. This is available through bookshops online and in stores. In this chart about eternality, we learn that there are 12 passages that talk about eternity and how Jesus comes from eternity, accomplishes eternal salvation, and will remain our high priest forever. May God bless you richly as you study through this text and as you teach it to others.